You're watching HCC News with Seth Cox, Hannah Arthur, and Nick Wall with Sports. Hello and welcome to another edition of HCC News. I'm Hannah Arthur. And I'm Seth Cox. Here's what's making headlines around Hutchinson this week. The U.S. is turning into a country of overweight, out-of-shape Americans. That was the premise for Dr. Wayne Scott Anderson's speech this past Tuesday at the Dillon Lecture Series in the sports arena. Dr. Anderson is a leading expert on nutrition and health issues and spoke to the crowd about, how we can do, about what we can do to change our own health. And thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm very excited about being here and hopefully um, we'll have a better week than you did over the weekend. I heard you had a pretty tough weekend, so I wanted to, uh, I'm glad no one was hurt seriously. But unfortunately, people are being hurt seriously every day uh, as a result of their daily choices. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I believe and what we're seeing is necessary for us to do as Americans. There's not one state that has less than 19% uh, less than um, obesity. Very soon, let's cut to the chase. So if you look at this, and please, I'm not talking about evolution here. This is from New Yorker magazine. But you can see we're going in the wrong direction. And in fact, why is it so significant that we're overweight? Yes, you may not look good, as good as you'd like in your bathing suit or your clothes not fit that well, but it's much more profound than that, as you know. In fact, if we look at the continuum of disease, you can see over time, uh, two-thirds of us, uh, or over two-thirds of the population are overweight or obese, leading to 70 million Americans who have insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, leading to diabetes, which 28 million Americans have, and leading to cardiovascular disease. So what we do traditionally is we put out fires, we're treating the symptoms, we're discouraging patients from taking an active role, and the circumstances rule versus individual responsibility. It is key, if anything happens today for you, is that you understand that you need to be the main factor. You are the dominant force in your life on whether you're going to be healthy about it. Nobody can do this for you. So today, as you leave here and make the decision, in all areas of your life, you can make small little choices that either move you towards health or move you towards disease. In fact, those choices today, the, seri the serious part about it is that today they make very little detectable difference. Whether you have a salad for lunch today or a cheeseburger, you're not going to see the effect today. Or after dinner, whether you watch 30 minutes of uh, watch TV or do a 30 minute walk, doesn't make much difference today. But over time, if we, you decide today to start making those choices and moving forward, you can see over the effect of weeks, you'll start to see a small separation. And over months, that separation becomes more profound. And over years, it gets to the point where now you've put yourself in an optimal health state. And that will not happen unless you take an active role to become educated, to get the support, and to understand how that, that happens. These are the six key ingredients as you lose weight that are necessary so you don't join that 85% that gains their weight back. You need to have breakfast every day. And I've got research at the end there. I'm not really going to have time to show you today, uh, but supports that eating breakfast every day is critical. Exercise or activity on a daily basis is important. Having proper support, someone or in a group that can help either a coach or physician or a peer group that you work together uh, or a clinic. Uh, low fat, smaller meals, five to six meals per day, an individual plan for long term success, and to monitor your weight closely. These are the six key parts, or be slim, that allow you to maintain your health long term. Uh, we need to teach people the underlying things so they understand the things we talked about today. Because I can tell you right now that yucky cheese and crappy cream are not going away in the near future. So, with that, a national priority is catch the wave to a healthy America. Thank you so much. It seems like Hutchinson's vehicle bad luck has not yet run its course. Timothy Allen Gehring was driving on Haven Road early Wednesday morning when he fell asleep at the wheel and drove into the Arkansas River. Only wearing the shoulder strap to his seatbelt, Gehring's lone injury was a cut to his jaw. He ran home after the crash to call 911 after no one stopped to help and his cell phone was damaged in the river. A West Star power line and barbed fence also were damaged in the incident. A Hutchinson Middle School teacher who was arrested last week has been charged in municipal court with two counts of domestic battery, harassment by telephone, and obstruction or interference with the law, with the law enforcement. The charges 
stem from an incident involving Roy Freeman Jr., a Hutchinson Middle School math teacher, in which he is accused of causing rude physical contact with a woman in her 30s on April 30th. He was booked into Reno County Jail and has since posted a $500 bond. It's time once again for the Spring Student Art Exhibition at the Stringer Fine Arts Building. Students in HCC's art program will be displaying their individual work in the foyer until May 9th. The exhibit is free and open to the public during normal business hours. There are plenty of fun events around Hutchinson this week on Saturday. The annual women's show will be from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. in the Meadowlark Building along with the Health Fair in the Sunflower South Building on the Kansas State Fairgrounds. The Health Fair is free for anyone while the women's show is $2 for anyone 12 years and up. Also on Saturday, Dillon Nature Center is celebrating Earth Day and Arbor Day with several fun events. From 7.30 to 11.30 a.m., the Horticulture Club is hosting a plant sale. At 1 p.m., be on hand for the grand opening of the new Children's Playscape. Then stay from 1 to 3 for a variety of free activities for the whole family in the Playscape area. The Space Shuttle Discovery took one last flight on Tuesday, riding piggyback on a modified Boeing 747 Discovery was flown to Washington DC where it will take its place in the Washington in the Smithsonian. The pair took a victory lap over the White House, the Capitol, and the Washington Monument before landing at the Dulles International Airport. After leading the shuttle fleet with a total of 39 missions, Discovery will take the place of its sister ship, the shuttle prototype Enterprise at the Smithsonian. The Enterprise will be moving to New York City. Last weekend, a K-State student won the 2012 National Fishing Championship, bringing home over $100,000 in cash and prizes. Ryan Patterson is an advertising major from Garden Plain who competed without a partner against 24 of America's best two-man college bass fishing teams. Patterson's brother was his partner, but since he transferred to a junior college, he was disqualified. The competition was three days worth of bass fishing, and on Sunday's final weigh-in, he brought five fish that weighed a total of over 18 pounds, outscoring the second place team by only two pounds. His win qualified him for the Forest Wood Cup in August, which has a prize of $600,000. The HCC Honors Program present presentations will present from 2 to 4 p.m. on Sunday, April 22nd at the Stringer Fine Arts Building. Students discuss the project as early as October and must choose a professor to mentor before the end of the first semester, who they work one-on-one -on -one with, with throughout the remaining year on the project. Topics of presentations range from firearms and hunting to analyzing the method of transcendentalism. Students in the Presidential Scholars Program must pass the Honors Project in order to meet their criteria for their scholarships. The Kansas Relays in Lawrence, Kansas are set to include a new type of competition. This year, while track and field events go on around Memorial Stadium, the Kansas Athletics Food Vendor will be attempting to build a world record. A world record nacho plate, that is. Rick Brown, general manager of Center Plate, said the goal is to stack a nacho plate 80 feet long and 3 feet wide. Total weight, 4,600 pounds. That's 1,200 pounds of beans, 860 pounds of beef and nacho cheese, and 600 pounds of the tortilla chips. The current record is a 4,000 pound plate <laughs> built by a Ma Massachusetts restaurant in October. <laughs> The weather is predicted to be much milder this weekend, with the outbreak of nearly 100 tornadoes in Kansas last Saturday. We wanted to find out if HCC students heeded the new early warning systems and what they did to prepare in this week's Campus Talk. What did you think of the new early warning detection system that they had for the tornadoes this weekend? Well, I think it was a good idea because people could have time to prepare and everything. Well, I think it must have been extraordinarily helpful, though in Wichita, I probably couldn't say the same thing. No, it was actually uh, pretty cool because uh, we actually had a track meet when all the storms were, so it was kind of cool to know what we were going to get into. What do you do to, to prepare for storms? Well, I usually get candles ready and blankets, and I sit down in front of the TV and watch and see what's going on. 
Well, if I need to, I go down to my basement. Uh, at the time, I was hanging out uh, at a friend's house. I went down to her basement. Um, although being a Kansan, I typically just uh, go about my day and let the nature take its course. I don't really <laughs> prepare. I just go with the flow. Something happens, I just think on my feet, pretty much. What were you doing during the storms this weekend? Um, basically watching TV, trying to see what was going on, kind of freaking out a little bit. I was actually at a track meet in Pitt State, and we were coming back while all the storms were coming. So we had to, we had to stop a few times. Seth, what were you doing when all the bad weather hit last weekend? I was actually with a bunch of friends playing Risk. Just I was worrying about my parents. They were in Wichita, but they were in the clear. <laughs> good, good. Well, as we leave for a short commercial break, we want to honor Dick Clark, the ever youthful host and tireless television personality who introduced rock and roll to much of the nation. Dick Clark died this past Wednesday after suffering a heart attack following an outpatient procedure in Santa Monica. Dick Clark died at the age of 82. And welcome back to HCC News for Sports. I'm Nick Wall. The Hutchinson Community College baseball team has hit the home stretch of its 2012 season. The Blue Dragons took three of four games against Colby on April 17th and 18th to move into third place in both the Jayhawk West and the Region 6 West standings. The Dragons topped Colby 6-0. 9-8 and 12-7 while dropping one game in the series by a score of 6-2. HCC, now 30-15 and 15 overall, sits just three games back from first place Seward and trails second place Garden City by just a game in the all-important race for Region 6 seeding with a Region 6 record of 11-9. The Dragons will play host to Cloud County in a pair of doubleheaders on April 21st and 22nd. The games will be the regular season home finales. First pitch for both dates is set for 1 p.m. at Hobart Detter Field. And the softball team split an afternoon doubleheader with Heston College on April 17th at Fun Valley. The Lady Dragons lost a heartbreaker 7-8 in 10 innings before taking the nightcap from the Larks by a score of 8-5. Starting pitcher Brittany Delaney went all seven innings for the win and HCC out-hit Heston 12-7 for the contest. Hutch is now 17-24 overall and 8-20 in Jayhawk Conference play. The team next travels to Lindsburg on April 26 to face the Bethany JV squad in a non-conference matchup before beginning Region 6 playoff action on April 28th. And both the men's and women's track and field teams will be making the trip to Lawrence for the upcoming Kansas Relays on April 19th and 21st, or through 21st. Both track and field teams have seen the success of the indoor season translate into similar results this spring in the outdoor season. The teams will have one meet following the Kansas Relays before beginning the Region 6 championships right here in Hutchinson at Gowan Stadium May 3rd through the 5th. And finally, returning to Major League Baseball, many fans did have high hopes for a young and talented Kansas City Royals ball club this season. But as has been the case for the Royals for as long as many can remember, the team has failed to deliver. KC is, just, is now just 3-9 and nine after being swept in back-to-back -back series by Central Division foes Cleveland and Detroit. So apparently it isn't 
our time, as the Royals 2012 slogan suggests. And that's all I have for sports. Now over to Carson for the weather. Thank you, Nick. Well, this weekend looks to be a little bit warmer, a high of 62 and a low of 41 for your Friday with the wind directions at east-northeast. Sunrise is set for 6.44 a.m. and sunset at 11 p.m. Saturday looks to be a high of 68 and a low of 46 with wind at northeast and your sunrise at 6.42 a.m. and the sunset at 8.12. And on Sunday, it looks to be a high of 74 with a low of 50 degrees, wind at south-southeast, sunrise at 6.41 a.m., sunset looks to be set for 8.13. Well, it looks like the weather this weekend is going to slow down with the rain and hopefully less tornado possibilities. Awesome. I love the good weather. Me too. <laughs> nice weather is always good. I like it a lot. Yeah. Well, that's all we have for this week. Tune in again next time for another edition of ACC News. I'm Seth Cox. I'm Hannah Arthur. And I'm Nick Wall. And I'm Carson Prismus. Have a great week. HCC News is a production of the Broadcast and Media Technology Program of Hutchison Community College. For more information on the program or to submit your story ideas, please call 665-3433.